Hey guys, welcome to another video. This one is going to cover the damage grip and pommel add-on available for the Survivor Hilt. So hopefully you already have one of these, the Survivor. Uh, if you don't, you should get one. But now that it, we have these little bad boys in, you can also order this hilt without the repaired grip if you just prefer the fallen order. But you can also order both. So this is a standalone hilt. And if you order the uh, damage grip add-on, uh, it's an additional $95. The hilt retails for $325. Uh, but the fallen order version minus the repaired grip is 370. So this video is going to cover how to, um, if you have this hilt or if you get this add on piece, basically how to put it together and something, some tips that I recommend, uh, to make things a little bit easier. So I'm going to start, let's unbox the hilt. Now this would be basically what you would see when you receive the hilt. This is how it arrives. Pretty much all put together. This is not going to be 100% assembled. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Take that here. All right. So this is how the hilt looks when you first get it. And notice that it's not gonna have the screws in place and it's not gonna have the accent pieces here in the emitter. Uh, which is okay. Um, actually, I'm gonna get out these screws. So the thing that you will need to do this part as well is a little baggie of six screws here with the Allen wrench. But the rest we can set to the side for now. Okay, so going over the damaged grip and comparing it to the repaired grip version that we see in the Survivor trailers. So a lot of people are familiar, very familiar with the Fallen Order version. Now in some examples, some weathered examples that have been done um, by our good friend Austin at Astoria Workshop, um, this is not the essentially the final version that this would be left in. You would be bending these out, um, scuffing it up, weathering. Uh, it's, meant, it's meant to be uh, tampered with essentially. So not that it shouldn't look like this or can't, but you can you can do a lot with this. So you can see like this is an ideal piece to flare out. All of these are if you're careful. Um, and I'm not going to give weathering tips on this. That's not the point of this video. Uh, I always I would defer to the experts on that. And the pommel. So most pommels have been um, that I've seen are machined, CNC machined. They're made of aluminum. This is made from uh, multi-jet fusion plastic. It is printed. And the reason it's printed is because this would not be able to be machined with this much detail. So I'm not sure if you can see all the different little details and add-ons here, but it's just not feasible. Honestly, probably not even possible to get machined with that much precision. So that is why it was printed in a, you know, high quality material. And there's really no reason to worry about uh, damaging it. Thankfully, if anything ever happened, I mean, these can just be reprinted and they're pretty cheap to do so. So um, yeah, this is not metal. It is printed plastic. And anyways, when it's in here, most of the, most of the time, you're not really gonna risk any damage to it unless you happen to drop it, I guess, directly on the bottom um, and then yeah you could run into an issue but just you know don't drop your saber and you should be okay and then another piece that is important for this assembly this is metal this is aluminum this is an adapter so on this end right here are the threads the threading matches up and goes into the bottom of this and before that happens this gets press fit into place so if you receive these parts right here separately, so we'll focus just on that for a sec. If you receive these parts separately, like some of you who have pre-ordered and already have your sabers and are waiting for it to arrive, um, these four parts are what you'll get. And you'll get them like this. This won't be together. 
and there's a reason for that. And there are a couple steps that I recommend you do before you get to that point. So putting this together, and it will be a little bit tough to do, it's going to be a press fit. So if you can see uh, a little bit below these threads, there is what looks like a raised sort of lip. It goes all the way around. And then if you look on the inside, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but there is a matching hollowed out lip inside this piece. And yep, you guessed it, that is supposed to press fit into there and that is what holds it in place. So I'm not gonna do it yet because once you get it in, it's pretty hard to get out. And that's why I send this separately so this can be sort of the last part that you do and you press it all together. And it does require a good amount of force. So first thing we're gonna do, we're going to swap this with the repaired grip section. And in this state, it's really easy because there are no screws holding it in place. So we're just gonna take this out. And as some of you already know, this is a separate piece as well. So this top piece, which goes inside the hill, is separate from the grip. And we can just go ahead and set this aside for the time being. And the threading matches up. So we can just swap out the threads here. Okay, now that, now that is swapped out and replaced with the repaired grip. Now you're gonna put it in the same way. Get this little speck of whatever that is right there. Hmm, I don't know what that is. But the point that I'm getting to, so now you have this inserted and it will spin freely without any screws. And that will allow you to essentially clock this the way you want. Now, I don't know what the exact way this is supposed to be as far as orientation wise, the accuracy buffs will be able to tell me, but if you want it like this, you can have it here, put your set screws in, or if you want it this way, you can have it here, tighten it up. Essentially, you have the option to do what you wanna do here. So let's say we're gonna leave it just like this. For some reason, this seems correct to me. Um, and for the sake of this video, we're gonna say that this is the correct way to do it, even though it's probably not. So next, you're gonna take uh, your screws. You don't have to do all of them. And just for this example, we're just gonna do, we'll just do a few. We're not gonna do all six. So these screws are locking this into place. Just do one more for good measure, because why not? Okay, so now this should not move anymore, but you will be able to unthread this. So that will now thread and unthread, and then every time you put it back, it should be in the same place you had it locked in the first time. Now moving on to the pommel. Now again, I don't know what the preferred or correct way to have this facing is, but let's say you do have a preferred way that you want it to, that you want it to be. Let's say you want it uh, to be like that. Just for example, we'll say that is the way you want it to be. So uh, you can do this a couple different ways. You can use um, maybe a piece of tape. Um, basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna mark the middle. So if, let me grab a piece of tape here. Let's just say that this is gonna be the middle. The center of this tape is the middle, okay? Easy enough to see. It's just, it's just an identif identification marker, nothing special, okay? Now we can actually take this out for the time being. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in place and I'm gonna attempt to thread this in by itself. If I can do that, let's see the best way. There we 
go. Maybe I can use my thumb. There we go. Yeah, that actually seemed to work. Okay. Now, remember this was about where we had this lined up like, like this. So we'll say this is the middle. Um, or maybe it was this way. Either way, the point is, um, if this is the middle, wherever you decide you want to match this piece up, okay? So let's say we wanna put it right there. You can take something else, whatever you want, and you can then mark. Now I'm gonna keep this for myself, so I don't mind doing this. I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie, okay? So if you guys can kind of follow what I'm doing here, when I put these back together and basically glue or whatever method you want to use to secure them in place. That is where I am going to line everything up. Now, if I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see that once it's in or remember where that's at, just go ahead and make another mark. Go ahead and mark on the threads, it's okay. You can do whatever kind of marking you want, really. This is just to get this into place. So lining up the middle of the tape, wherever I marked it before. Okay, and now we're gonna press fit this in. Now the next step, before you actually finally press this in, now you're gonna want to add a little bit of adhesive in here. You can use E6000, that's the one I always recommend. It's the most preferred. If you want something that's a little bit quicker setting, you don't wanna wait as long, you can get maybe some super glue. Um, but whatever you like using the most and what works best for you, you can go ahead and put that in. And we're gonna put a little bit along the inside of here so that when we press this, press this in and let it sit, it will prevent this from moving anymore. And basically, let me show you an example of one that is not glued in and why it would have been important to have it glued in in the first place. So here's one that I already had assembled, but you can see this will spin freely because it is not glued in. Now I'll take this back out, but I just wanna show an example of what this might look like if you were to press fit this in and you don't have any glue in place or anything to hold it. Now you can glue it after the fact. You can maybe try to get some glue up here in the top, uh, maybe in a spot that you think it might be hidden, but it's gonna be better to put that glue on the inside just so it's out of the way, it's unseen because when you go to thread this in, if these two pieces are not basically connected, it's gonna be real hard to get those threads to spin. See, this will just keep spinning and spinning and spinning, but it's not actually threading because this part is spinning, not the threads. So that is why it's important to do this part first and glue it in place, and then you can thread it in. I'm gonna actually grab a little bit of glue here. And I don't expect this to set pretty quick, but just wanna kind of show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of super glue. And we'll see actually if this will set in a good amount of time. Super glue works pretty quickly. I don't like using it for a lot of things just because it's kind of messy. You can leave a bit of a cloudy body mark so I got a couple dabs in there and then I'm gonna press fit this in so press fitting this in requires a bit of strength but let's see if I can get it on the first try can do it actually off camera okay so you might have heard a little snap okay so this can still move a little bit so I'm gonna let that glue sit for just a second and while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna take this tape off. Go ahead and take that off. All right, so, so far, uh, summary of what we've done. We put this piece in place after lining up where we wanted this to be clocked at. Now you could change it if you wanted to. Of course, you're gonna to have to start over from the beginning, this whole process. You loosen these, re-tighten them after you rotate this the way you want, set it in place. And then you're gonna go in, mark, mark a spot that you want the pommel to be aligned with, 
you're going to thread your threaded piece, the adapter we'll call it, into your damage grip. And then you're going to line up whatever mark you make here and the mark you make on the pommel so that everything is nice and straight. Now I can feel this is already starting to um, tighten up, which is great. And before we move on, I'm going to show these little brass rods, which are completely optional to use. Some people may or may not use them. Um, there are six holes. There's one here, which we use as a pointer here, here, here. They go all the way around. And these will not be a snug fit. You will need to glue these in. Uh, for those, I do recommend E6000, uh, or even you can use a tiny bit of JB Weld if you want. Um, let those sit, and then after they've sat in place, you can go back and you can bend them, do whatever you want. But some people don't even use those. Some people like to use like wires, other frayed bits. Um, but those all in are included with the add-on kits. So they will come in a little bag. You get six of them, but completely optional. All right, so now that this is pretty much secured in place, I'm going to go back and I'm going to see if I can thread this in. Should be able to make sure there we go it's not going to require a ton of threading to catch okay so that's in place uh, if i recall that is about where i had everything at yep because i remember i had these little squares pretty much on the sides so that in summary is how you would make it your fallen order now there's other steps you can do before this you could um, definitely weather all this you can paint it before doing all these steps but when you get to assembling these pieces to transform it from the survivor version to the fallen order um, these are the steps that I recommend and there may be other steps you can take but for me um, this is just the one I thought of that would be the easiest for most people to do uh, and once this is in, if you're going to leave it in this um, in this setup, really there's not too many reasons to take off the pommel, but you can, uh, especially for example if you have the crystal chamber chassis uh, coming through. So that would be cool. Obviously, if you want to see that, just take off the pommel. Um, but I figure most people will just kind of leave leave this intact. That goes back on just like that. So that is my, I guess, step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to put this together. Um, for those who are receiving their damage grips soon, I highly recommend you um, follow these steps, but you are welcome to um, do it your own way. One disclaimer, one major disclaimer. If you get to a point that you have not followed these steps and you went ahead and you pushed this in and now you got to figure out how to get it back out. Um, I do not have a lot of solutions for you at this time. I'm going to have to talk with someone who has got one of these and been able to got it out um, about the best way and I will give my best recommendation. But please do not, and I, I can't stress this enough, do not try to grab this um, with your fingers and pull it out just like that. Why? Because threads are sharp and if you pull this, there's a really good chance you're going to cut yourself. Um, I've done it before. I've got some scars somewhere to prove it. But this is going to be not a great place to grab it and pull because you're going to have to squeeze it. Like I said, it's a sharp, it's a sharp edge. It's a, it's a threading. Also, please do not use anything like this to grab and pull it out. Um, pliers and, and threads and, com and com compressing those threads is not a good idea. You're going to damage the threads. So please don't do that. Uh, my best recommendation is find a way to kind of get some uh, a grip from the inside and, and pulling it out that way. Uh, but really, if you can avoid getting to this point, um, try to avoid it. If you do and you give up, um, one recommendation I, I guess I would make is you can try to glue it from the outside, get some adhesive, you know, in a corner that's not going to be seen. So placing some glue, you know, like right here or like right here where it's going to touch both of these points of contact, that would be another option too, I guess. So um, 
yeah, try, just try not to damage this. You don't want to damage this. You don't want to damage this piece because I don't have extras. So that was the only disclaimer I wanted to make. If you found this helpful, just let me know. If you have any questions, send me a message. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's helpful. And as always, um, thank you guys so much for the support. I will see you on the next video.